Yeah, that as well. It does prevent. So the sister said, movies are haram. Um, is it because it takes away from the remembrance of Allah? That could be a reason. But also, there's clear cut things that are haram that come together in movies that you can't separate from movies. For example, music. You cannot take music away from movies. It doesn't happen. The other thing you can't take away from music is free mixing. Men and women, women in movies, da da da, showing off. You know, doing tabarruj and whatnot. Um, I mean, not just that, the plots in the movies, the plans, the stories. I mean, it's all haram. It's all haram, right? Can, I mean, will a movie sell? Will a movie sell if there's no one who gets killed? And no one who gets betrayed? And no one who gets cheated on? No one who's unfaithful? Will a movie sell? Will a movie sell? You tell me a movie you ever watched in your life that sold... If you don't, because you're going to expose your sin. But a movie that was, um, was, uh, was, um, sorry, this chair is bugging me. A movie that, that was out there, was big, it hit blockbuster, cinema, everyone went to watch it. And there was no haram in it. Through the movie, the children get corrupted, the people get corrupted. I actually want to start a campaign soon, inshallah. I'm just waiting to do it. Uh, and it needs to get a sledgehammer. Um, I have a TV in my parents' house. And I want to smash it. And I want to do an Instagram video and start off a campaign like encouraging everyone else to smash their TVs like that too. Well, I believe everyone should take a sledgehammer, smash their TV. Because all of the filth, when I say all, I mean literally all of the filth, all of the haram are brought together inside your house on that one little box. That one little screen. I believe people who have TVs in the house and their children watch and they let them watch. Wallahi, I believe those people, Allah, the way He's going to question them on the day of judgment is going to be different, man. <laughs> the way, how are you going to tell your kid, behave? And every day you put filth on for them to see. You think they're not out of the house and you think they're not watching the, the, the shows and the programs? Where did we, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I grew up in a typical Pakistani household. Do you know what my life was? My life was curry, cricket. It was like that. I, I was born in this country. I was born in this country. I didn't know how to speak the English language till I was five. I remember being five years old, running around the living room, and I was trying to count all the English words that I knew. And I was saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I will say one, two, three, four. And I was saying twinkle, twinkle, little star. And I, said, I was like, that's all I know of the English language. So for me, I shouldn't have had a jahiliya. I shouldn't have had a jahiliya. But then why did I have a jahiliya? How did I get involved in things that I got involved in? I wasn't from the estates. I wasn't from the blocks. I didn't grow up in a council estate. I didn't have a drug dealer as my neighbor. You know who my neighbor was? It was an old guy. He was a carpenter. He used to take me when I was seven years old and he used to make little pencil cases out of wood for me. Now that's the, that's, I, had, I, had, I had like roses growing in my back garden kind of thing. That was, that was me, what destroyed me? TV. From TV, I started seeing all these rappers and this, this gang life, and I was like, wow, that actually looks alright, you know? And next thing you know, and then I'm like, okay, these are the kind of people I want to make friends with, and then I make friends. Where did it all happen? TV. TV destroyed me. TV destroyed many of you. TV destroyed marriages. Allahi, none of you, none of you, or rather the overwhelming majority of you, I do not know what a real concept of what marriage is like. Because you spend your whole life watching Bollywood. And Notebook. And P.S. I Love You. You spend your whole life watching this. You have no idea what marriage is like. Have no idea. The Somali community was alright, but then I heard they started watching Bollywood. problem with life. 
I'm saying women come into marriage, men come into marriage. Marriages break up quickly because they don't know. They have no idea what marriage is. They got a bad understanding of what marriage was from their parents because their parents didn't know the Sharia in terms of marriage, most of us. And then we got a bad understanding from all that we saw on TV. Finished. So that's why sister TV is haram. Okay, so that's a very good question the sister asked. I like intelligent questions like that, Allah Mbari. She said, obviously you have this dichotomy where, you know, okay, there's problems that come from TV, but it's also good in the sense where people who have learning difficulties can be aided in terms of visual learning. People can learn many things that, you know, I would say you wouldn't be able to learn documentaries and things like that, you know. So the way to answer this is the firstly, I'll answer it in a few ways. The first way is that there's a principle in our Sharia, which is which is that pushing away harm, it takes precedence over bringing good. So I'll give you an example to explain that. There is a situation that I have. Either I can bring about good, and with that good, I know some harm might come, but there'll be good there. Should I do that? Or, sorry, 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 let me rephrase that. So as a default position, I have, I have two possible options. Something where I can bring good, or I can push away harm. The one that I should always take is the one that's going to push away the harm. That's first. People think bringing good is the main thing. No. The primary thing is to push away the harm. That's the first thing. If there was no good, like people were not doing any good actions, but the mere fact that they were not doing any evil actions, and they were just at a standpoint, at a standstill, would be an accomplishment in the Sharia. Does that make sense? So now with this TV, let's apply it. You're saying good will come, but evil will also come. So for me, the primary thing as a Muslim that the Sharia instructs me to do, before I think about bringing good, how can I push away harm? Before I teach my kids anything good, I have to make sure no harm comes to them. Do you see? Because I cannot fill up a cup that's already full. I have to first empty it out. So I've got an empty cup. Before I start filling up with good, I have to make sure no evil comes into it that's going to contaminate in the first place. Does that make sense? So TV, 100%. It might bring some good, no doubt. And we can talk about whether the good is as bad as the evil, whatever have you. That's a different discussion. I, without a shadow of a doubt, I believe that the evil from TV is way more than a good. Without a shadow of a doubt. But let's for argument say, let's just say it's exactly the same. By virtue of the fact that evil is coming, I should push it away. And I should close the door. It would be better for me to just push the harm away and no good came. That would be better for me in terms of my religion. In this life and the next. Sheikh Ab... Uh, Sheikh um, Abdul Karim Khudair, Hafizullah, who is one of the Stad of the Hamas teachers, and he's from the uh, senior committee of scholars in Saudi Arabia, they gave him a smartphone. And smartphones got so much good, right? <coughs> they gave him a smartphone, <coughs> and uh, one day he was on it, and he said a woman popped up, maybe through an app or something, he saw an image of a woman. And he said he, she was naked. Now when he says naked, he means she wasn't wearing hijab. For him, naked is not what naked is to us. For them, they, everyone is in niqab. So if he sees a woman who's naked, it means she might have some makeup or something like that. And she's not wearing hijab. Or even if she's wearing hijab, she's got makeup or something. So he was like, when I saw that, I threw away the smartphone and I bought a dumb phone. So the students, they said exactly what he said. But they said, Sheikh, so much good can come out of the smartphone. Like, you know, you can download books and PDFs and this, that and this, that. And he said in our Sharia, Daf ul mafsadati awla min jalb al maslaha. He said, pushing away the harm takes precedence over bringing good. So that's one way to answer it. The second way to answer it is that visual learning can be achieved without a TV. Parents can do it for their kids. And I believe parents are just lazy. And that's the hard truth of the matter. Parents are just lazy. Visual learning doesn't have to be on a TV. I'm a visual learner, I'm dyslexic. So I know exactly what you're saying. I learn in that exact same way, okay? So what I do is if I had a teacher or a parent who was going to teach me, who was going to take time out, buy a whiteboard and draw it out for me. Buy me those little picture cards or as a child, if I was a child, you know? You can buy toys that will accomplish visual learning 
and you cut out the filth that could come from TV. The third thing I want to mention is that I've actually done a bit of research into this. And it's actually proven that, you know, TV actually dumbs the person's brain down. And potentially one of the reasons why we have so much ADHD and this, that within our youngsters and our youth and whatever have you, is because of TV. TV, it dumbs down the person's brain. You know when you learn as a child, I have a friend who's a psychologist. He's very good at Long Vatican. His area of study is children and education. He mentioned, you know what kids, you know what parents do? Is when the kids are playing around, they're touching things, they're breaking things, they're falling over. The parents get annoyed. So they put the TV on. Why? Because the, ch the kid just shuts, shuts up and sits in front. And the parent thinks they've done something good because they put on an educational TV program. He said, Wallahi, that's a problem because the way Allah created a brain is not for the child to learn in a static way. Not for the child to learn in a dumb way where he's just information to being poured at him. Allah created the child to learn dynamically. To learn through his, through his body, through her body. So when a child is bumping his head, he's learning. Okay, I do that, I'm gonna fall. When a child grabs something, he's learning. He's learning through his hands. We complain why our children don't have creativity nowadays. Well, like creativity is dying. Creativity is such a powerful gift that Allah gave us. And it's dying, why? Because of these things. Let the child explore the house, be creative, be imaginative, be adventurous. Climb up and down the house. Make a bit of noise. That's what the child's supposed to do. At the end of the day, the parents just don't want to be parents. That's what it is. They just don't want to be parents. That's how my mum raised me. She put me in front of a TV, and TV came after. My mum was playing games with me, and you know, we were building tents, put chairs up in the house, and you know, take blankets and put them over, over, the, over the chairs and make little tents and tunnels. And I would make my own wall on the stairs, I would take all these quilts. And I'll throw them and I'll make my own great water china on the stairs. I try to climb it and I'll do all sorts of crazy things. That's, that's Alhamdulillah, my parents encouraged that in me. That's why I believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me this creativity and this adventure kind of thing that hasn't died down in me. I used to do weird things. I'd go to the shop, I'd save a little money, pocket money, and I'd buy wood. And I remember I tried to build a submarine one time. I had no idea what I was doing. I ended up only building a wall that collapsed. But the point was that, you know, this is how we're supposed to encourage the children to be. Not to put them in front of that. So they'll learn by being dynamic, by being adventurous, whatever have you. You want the child to learn maths, buy him a maths game. You want the child to learn science, buy him those little science sets. You know, whatever have you. You want the child to learn visually, take the child to a museum. Don't need TV. TV is evil. Like. Hey guys, I really hope that you benefited from that video. Before you go, I want to ask you a really important question. Have you guys ever thought about studying Islam and seeking knowledge? If not, then I want you to reflect upon this hadith of the Prophet The Prophet said that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim. Of course, that doesn't mean you have to be a scholar, but you have to know the basics in order for you to be the best possible slave and worshipper of Allah that you can possibly be. So we decided to provide a solution for this. You see, many people want to study, but they don't have the means or the resources to do so. So we set up an online institute called the Knowledge College, where you can study Islam from the comfort of your own home. So if you want more information on the Knowledge College and you'd like to sign up, go to the link below, check out the website, and hopefully we we'll see you on the other side. Assalamu alaikum.